All right, so this is my, my demo where I was tracing with the blob brush over just a pencil raster reference layer. Now some uh, trouble people get into is that they'll, they'll be using um, strokes instead of paths when they trace. So let's say they're using the pen tool or they're using the shape tool or they're even using the blob brush tool, but it's a stroke, not a fill. So when I do that, it's used my settings enough it won't allow me to do that. So let me do it with the pencil tool as a, a stroke. All right, because if you do that, let me just uh, do a little bit of this. You see how it's just giving me one line. It's not giving me thickness like the blob brush tool does. I can set that thickness to whatever I want. And I can play with that stroke's quality. You know, I can make it go thick to thin, a little wobbly. That's really nice. I can even change it from being basic to being calligraphic. I like to use the, the five-point oval. Sometimes it's a default option, sometimes it's not, All right? And then modify from there, that's a 10-point oval. Let's take that down a little bit. So I'm basically using a five-point oval, but it's half a 10-point oval. Now, let's say that that looks great. That's how I want my line work to look. Really clean and calligraphic like that because I'm using the pencil tool and the stroke. Now I try to add to it to continue the shape. Right? And it creates an entirely new path, but that's no big deal. I can use the dropper tool and say just match the properties of this one. And then I have to set it again to be wobbly and set it again to be, what is it, uh, yep, there we go, that oval. Okay, ah. so there we are, no worries, except for this, how do I get those to come together? How do I clean those transitions up? And this is where the blob brush is, is kind of essential. So as strokes, when you erase, or when you cut them away, they'll still remain separate. And the only way to bring them together, you see they're separate there, they're separate here, is to line up that anchor point exactly. So use the small selection tool, find that anchor and line it up, kind of looking in the dark, for where they intersect exactly. But then there's no way I can smooth that out because those are edges of strokes. I don't have control of the inside and the outside. So what do you do? Well, you try to line up your anchor points or clean up whatever weirdness is going on with them like that, so that the outside looks the way you want. And then, once the stroke is selected, I'm gonna do it to these both, both of these strokes, then you go, this is very important, very helpful tool, you go to Object, Path, Outline, Stroke. We're gonna do this later with your text, uh, with found typefaces. We're gonna outline them. And it, it doesn't change anything, except that it makes it, makes them filled paths. Then you can select those filled paths and you can use Pathfinder. So this is a lot more steps than just using the blob brush, but you can use Pathfinder to merge them together so that they're all one path. And then you're able to go in with your pencil tool and smooth out the transitions. So a lot more work but at the end of the day, it will get you there if you love the way the stroke tool is 
is being used for your line work. Along those same lines, ha ha ha, that was a, that was a little joke, hilarious. In Photoshop, you have the ability, just like you have the ability to make shape tools, you have the ability to use your stroke tools to do something that's close to digital inking as well. So let me open up that pencil test in Photoshop and just show you how it might work. So I'm just going to take this, make a new layer, fill that layer. This is getting into digital color a little bit, which is good because that's the next thing we're doing. I'm going to move that blank white layer underneath. I'm going to take this just scan of the pencil, make it a low opacity. So let's say I want to digitally ink it within Photoshop. And it's, it's cool because I'm already at a fairly good resolution because I scanned it at a high resolution. So I'm at 400. I can make it bigger if I want it. I can make it, you know, 8 by 10 by 400 because it's set to resample before I start digitally inking. And some of you will want to, like, kind of try to ink it in Photoshop and then make a, a trace out of that. So let me show you a few ways. Of course, I can use the brush tool. can set it to black. I can set it to be pressure sensitive, but 100% hardness. I can set how big it can get. And I can start painting, but I want to paint with black. And I want to paint on a new layer above my pencil layer. So lock my pencil layer, lock my background layer. I'm going to have this be my ink line work, right? So if I use the brush tool, this is rasterized as I go. Oh, I'm only at 62% opacity. I want 100% opacity. But the problem is it's not going to smooth it for me as I go. So this is why I prefer the blob brush in Illustrator. Very wobbly, but I have that control. So what's another way I can do it? What if I use the vector tools? What if I use the stroke, but I use, or the pen tool, but I use the free form pen tool? So it's like the pencil stroke tool in uh, Illustrator. And I draw, again, it won't automatically smooth for me, but let me show you what it can do, which some students love. So I have a path there with anchors. Now what I can do is I can right click on that and I can make it a stroke path, right? Not a fill path. I can make it a fill path too, but that, that just fills up the shape. If I make it a stroke path, I can say I want it to be the brush tool settings that I last used, that it uses for the stroke. And if you think of all the different brush options in Photoshop, there are a lot more than we've had in Illustrator. And then if I wanted to simulate pressure, it will go thick to thin on the stroke. And it'll give me something like that. Right. And maybe that's good, maybe that's not. It's very different than this. And it is a stroke until I rasterize it. Let's see. I can rasterize it by free transforming the path. This allows me to stretch it. But you see that's separate from the, the stroke it outputted. So there's some compli complicated uses, but at any time I can make it. I can resize it. I can make it a smart object. And I can get slightly smoother line work that way. Now, if I want really, really technical line work, like you're doing kind of anime, uh, really thin line work, then I might use the freeform pen tool. Right click. And then do a stroke path that's based on the brush without simulated pressure. But I would set the brush to be much thinner. Maybe six pixels for this size. So let's try that again. Let's do the W. 
So there's all kinds of ways that Photoshop kind of cheats and lets you use vector tools to help things be a little cleaner. Right click, come on, give me the options. Stroke subpath, brush, don't simulate texture. There we go. So that gives me a really, really clean I'm trying to just get it so it doesn't show me the anchors anymore. Uh, has its own annoyances for sure. Using the stroke paths. And I could set it to be a different brush for the next time I use it. Let's see. There we go. So that's how you can get a really clean, uh, already rasterized image. But you have the same problems with the stroke as you would in Illustrator. And it doesn't do you the, the favor of smoothing it out as you go. All right. So the next step is what's called flat color. Okay. So I have this image that I drew over my pencils. And I'm... Because I did it all with the blob brush, it's pretty darn clean. It looks even cleaner than the one that I live traced right from my scanned inks. But there's still places where I could use the pencil to improve it. It's always good to kind of look over it. Especially if you're going for really hyper clean professional work. You pride yourself on that. There are people that do photorealistic images in Illustrator just to show their skill in controlling every anchor. But I am not one of them. All right. So once I have this, this is my um, vector text. This is a, te a text test. So I'm going to save this as an EPS. I'm going to call this my ink text test line work EPS to the desktop. And now I have two, two EPSs. Oh, what did I do wrong there? I have my line work EPS, and then I want to have my text test line work. I click something without thinking. I don't know what those links are about, but I'll worry about them if I need to worry about them. Okay, now I can close Illustrator. And this is the next phase. We go into coloring. So I have these two EPS files. Just to show you, this one was created with the blob brush. This one was created with live trace and then just altering it. Are they that different? Let's look at the double use. The one that's traced with the blob brush is going to be just a little bit cleaner. It's just a little bit more intentional, right? The one I live traced, it was a lot faster. It took my ink lines, but you'll see that there's more anchor points than you need. Everything looks a little bit just chunkier. Now, if you see that's a problem, there's actually a solution for that that I can show you. So if I open this back up with Illustrator, this is the one I live traced. Remember, they're just anchor points. What I could try is selecting it all and doing what's called simplifying it. So I go up to Object, and I go to Path, and I go to Simplify. And this is basically saying, I know I have more anchor points than I need. So I want to preview it, but I don't want to simplify it that much. First, I'm going to take both of these all the way to their to the right side, and then that doesn't change anything. But then if I 
turn down the curve 